I love love the uh, uh, quake quake uh, uh, oh, yeah, poster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was I one of to... my favorite games growing up. <laughs> yeah, mine too. I I uh, used to play uh, quake uh, quake free. Uh, reader competitively uh, back mm. in the early 2000s and became reasonably good like one of the best in Denmark but uh, you know not enough to really uh, you know live off it so yeah yeah <laughs> I it's, turned it's... to computer science instead <laughs> that's one way to do it be a be a quake hero or just take a computer science class why would you yeah. be good at the game when you can program the game and just make yourself a superhero on it oh you know? well, yeah <laughs> oh yes yeah well uh, I was sort of uh, reached I practiced quite a bit and went to a few tournaments but I could sort of see my my um I reached the level of of where I could, you know, take my talent, and and it wasn't a you know sustainable level. <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. It so it, it, it gets you you either go all in and full addiction, or it mm -hmm. becomes just something like look at all these gaming consoles behind me, and every now and then I just look at it, it's collecting dust. I be like, when am I going to sit down and play some of these games? I have to tell you though, I love the the Steam Deck. It's like a handheld device with a an XR mm. kind of little glasses. I put them on, hook it up to the Steam, and I'm going. I'm going. You know, I love that experience. If you haven't tried X Real, try it. It's really cool. They're not sponsoring mm. our podcast, just so everyone knows. It's just something, a product that I'm really liking. Mm. I, to, I, to... I did did get a get an Xbox home with me from um, the MVP summit this year. Mm. Mm. But uh, honestly, it's mostly been my kids playing around with it. I, I don't really. Like when I have some free time, I, I want to code. I, I um, yep. you know, I, 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 I the, and, I'm, but I'm also like I'm, I'm the kind of person who, when he gets really into something, I, I, you know, I can't put it down. So uh, you go all uh, in. Yeah. So I, I try to avoid too much of, um, you know, getting, uh, getting stuck on TV shows or something where you can just sit and binge and binge and binge and uh, yeah, or, yeah, and same with gaming. So yeah, I, I, I couldn't tell, you know, be you in it. I couldn't tell at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I'm gonna build a testing framework for blazer and that's what's going to happen and i think it's mm -hmm. it's one amazing library so just for the people who are seeing this podcast for the first time you know i don't assume people are oh i mean we're reaching about thir 13,000, which is great for a niche mm -hmm. topic that we're talking about i think that's great i'm really happy with everyone but um for people who don't know this gentleman here first of all he's one of my favorite people he's a very kind person uh he he saved my butt unknowingly so many times uh, when I was trying to implement certain engineering standards and guidelines, test driving, you know, UI components at a time where everyone just told me, oh, why don't you just go use React? Why don't you just go use Angular? And I was like, no, you know, we have the same programming language. I don't want to do anything else. And people were like, okay, what's your test framework? And I was like, Duh, I don't know. So I went and asked uh, at a time, um, uh, uh, Daniel Roth. And Daniel Roth told me about, uh, um, uh, Steve Sanderson. And Steve said, I put in a prototype out there, but there's actually a guy that's building an amazing library out there. This is, you know, that's that's your production ready stuff. And that's BUnit. BUnit is a, a test framework that allows you to test Blazor components and it's unique. And I can't find anything that can live up to that kind of level. And you're looking right here, right at the uh, developer and the designer of of mm. this library, uh, Eagle Hansen. I, I'm very happy to see you again, brother. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you, Hassan? Nice of you Fair. to have me here. And uh, yeah, I want to correct you before we get going. Uh, All right. So you're almost right. B Unit is uh, I don't call it a framework. It's it's mm. a library. Yes. Uh, and you know things like X Unit, N Unit, and X Test. I I would consider those frameworks. Uh, yeah. A, a, a B Unit is something you add on top of that. Yeah. And uh, I do have um, a co-maintainer now, um, so uh, so I'm not um, you know pulling all the weight myself. He's he's been tremendous help. Um, Good, Good. Uh, Stephen Stephen Giesel. I hope I say yeah. that name right. Is a, yeah. a cool German guy who uh, yeah. from Switzerland. So yeah. he, he's helping out and and helping you know just drive the community around B Unit and helping Good. you know develop, bring us towards a version two as well. So. Good. Yeah, that, and that. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. As, a, as a second thing, I want to ask. So I, I know you've been getting some, um, um, some tough love. Let us put it that way on 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 Twitter and elsewhere <laughs> recently. And and uh, just for the record, like uh -huh. so, I I don't 
uh, I don't agree uh, necessarily with all you do, and I I don't agree with uh, you know just immediately forking. But that's we did we talked about that on 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 Twitter, and people can go and read the conversation there. Yeah. But I, I do want to say that in general, Hassan has been uh, he has been a personal sponsor of me um, for quite a few years, and and uh, you know much appreciated. And so Hassan is a uh, in terms of supporting open source, he he puts his uh, money where his mouth is. I think that's the term, right? So 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 you <laughs> yep. you can't fault people can't fault you for that. Uh, yeah. And but it's you know that's also why I wanted to jump on uh, with you here on, on yeah. your um, podcast, a stream, um, yeah. YouTube channel thing, yeah. and, and just have a conversation like immediately instead of you know it's just like you say we want to you know see people face to face and have a conversation yep. instead of you know screaming at each other on Twitter or just yep. having a polite conversation on Twitter which yep. I consider ours to be but still yep. yeah so. yeah absolutely absolutely mm -hmm. and you know I uh, just just for the people I think like emails uh tweets uh Facebook posts and stuff like that even GitHub issues and stuff like that it doesn't really like someone could be writing a comment and in your head you're reading it in a completely different tone oh, than yeah. what yeah, this yeah. person like you can't tell are they being sarcastic are they angry are they not angry i guess that's why emojis got super popular because something was missing in mm. all the languages around the world that actually truly encapsulates what a person really does even more so when people are not proficient like we are, yeah. we come from all different. Eagle and I, we, we, I, Eagle, you don't speak English natively, me neither, right? So when we speak, you know, we're still speaking, you know, it's there's a little translation going on before we actually put some content out there. There's still a little bit yeah. of uh, um, um, uh, a content in there that you're an influence. So we call it a dialect. Dialect is like your identity, idiolect, yeah. right? But anyway. What I was trying and, to talk and about culture as well, right? Uh, so, yes. but yeah, there's lots of things that that go goes missing in 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 translation when you're just using text, and yes. and it is the recipient, the ones that are reading your your text, that is determining the message, which is a problem sometimes. But uh, yeah. yeah, that is also why there's I think it's a it's a good idea to be overly cautious and overly polite online, just yeah. you know, to be yeah. on the safe side. But yeah, yeah. I like I like that you know just to do that go the extra mile even though you are you know you are kind you know you are and I see this a lot in your mm. tweets your messages most of your engagements for some reason I never read it except in this calm tone I wish I can be that kind <laughs> of calm and you know calculated composed but uh, you know every now and then just we have our own kind of moments so here's the thing you talked about this this individual I wanted just for the people you know and I'm I'm gonna put the title and everything around the the podcast. I want to discuss an issue about open source community, um, you know, support for the open source community. Uh, let's just walk a story here with a typical engineer out there. They're super excited and passionate about what they do. People like Eagle, for instance, they're mm. they're. He just told you right now, like when he's when he's not doing anything, he just wants to write code. It's something that makes him fulfills him personally. There is millions of engineers out, like this out there. Mm, and yeah. then what these engineers do, they be like, okay, there's GitHub. I can go and put this amazing product on GitHub and hopefully people will use it and find it useful, right? It's kind of a, a you know, if, if, if models, for instance, on Instagram, they take selfies and show people, you know, oh, look, you know, I'm in a beautiful place. I'm wearing this thing or that thing. Eagle or there's some other engineers, they're basically the models of code. They're basically going and saying, here is a selfie of me <laughs> writing an amazing, this is the, probably not the best analogy in the world. I know, I, I, I was, uh, <laughs> I, I think you what you're going, but to, yeah. Trying yeah. to get the, you know. <laughs> yeah. it, so, so GitHub is nothing, but when GitHub started, actually it was really called a social media for software engineers, for developers, mm. right? They call them developers, but different story. But, you know, engineers, they're writing code, they're putting content out there, and people are being excited about it and using it and all that, which is great. Mm. The thing, the thing, Eagle, that that always, I always bring that up, and I talk to people a lot about this, is that open source by design was not meant to be profitable. If you look a little bit back in time, it was like a big FU to corporations. Basically, there was the IBMs and the Xerox and the big companies out there. And then you have Linus, Richard Matthew mm -hmm. Stolman, and so many others saying, you know what? Not everything has to be for money. 
So I'm going to put my code out there for other smart people to use it and play with it and do whatever they want with it. Um, if you ask someone like Richard Matthew Stolman today, you know, how do you make money out of free software? Because your your license, your GNU GPL license mandates that people should have the right to redistribute, to modify, to do whatever they want with the software. Uh, he would tell you that people will have to pay for services. That's what he would say. He would say they have to pay for services, meaning mm -hmm. that if they need help using this tool or learning this tool or embedding this tool in some other system, that's when mm -hmm. you can make money. But you shouldn't be making money out of copies being given to other people. He calls it freedom zero, one, two, three. And the third one at the very top is to be, be basically truly free. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, and, and this is not a podcast for getting statements like that. I mean, you and I are super passionate about open source and software engineering. So this is just me thinking with you out loud. I have some ideas and, 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 and convections, and I want to examine them against someone like yourself, right? Yeah. So in terms of open source, you know, the FUS, free and open source software found, um, you know, movements, I think it's it's fine and good, and uh, I've certainly benefited from that as well uh, in my career. I am not opposed to it, uh, but I can also share some perspective as a uh, you know I, I'm not like um, um, Case. The main, I, I forgot the name of the the guy who built MOQ and some of the other really big. You know, oh, Kazoo? People on, yeah, Kazoo, yeah. On the, 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 yeah on the big, big impact people on, 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 on Nougat, for example, with millions and millions of downloads. We, we have a few millions uh, uh, for something uh, on BUnit right now. So, you know, relatively speaking, I'm not as, you know, impactful uh, kind of a guy. But I, I can certainly, I, I, I can almost recognize when you see the, the, the drama that was on, on Twitter today and yesterday, you can almost recognize the people uh, that have an open source library that they like that, that have the sort of same mindset as you that have an open source library that has hit a certain level of popularity and and they've experienced some of the things that might make them more um you know i i, I haven't actually found anybody who thinks it's a good idea what kazoo you know set out to do i i like the his 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 you know the 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 solution to the problem uh, i don't haven't really seen anybody saying yeah that's a good idea let's go with that um in terms of the implementation how how it was done but i i do feel that a lot of people are recognizing the the motivation the the I don't want to see pain, hurt, uh, challenge of of having a big open source project. Yeah. So yeah. I can tell my story, and 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 um, others might relate to that. I you know I can't talk for everybody in the open source world, but the sort of for me the progress in open source is very much like you said. You 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 have, you find some spare time, um, and you have something cool you want to build, and you end up building it, and you put it out to the world, and you are proud of it, and it's a good experience. You try, you know, you get to be your own boss. Like you don't have a manager telling you to yep. be to be yep. done yesterday with your product. You 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 get to set all the rules. You get to do everything the way you want to do it, and you share that code. You know, proudly with the world. And if you are lucky. And I guess not that many are actually lucky. Somebody actually starts using your stuff, like and and the excitement of you know having somebody come in and say yep. you can see the download count go up. You can see people actually yep. starting to open up issues and ask questions, and you get feedback. And it, it's it's a it's a fun time. It, it's like a good time. You 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 like that. That is the feeling of you know impact. Having somebody you know rely on you and and you know, um, people coming in and saying thank you for whatever you've done. So so that is. I, I would call that sort of a kind of a honeymoon phase, like for, yep. for open source. You've yep, done you something do say good, that. and yeah, and, yeah. and and it, it's it's gotten to a point where people actually use it. So you've done something worth worthwhile, and I think most people they start out in open source there at, at that level. They slap a MIT license or whatever something you know, yeah. fuss free and open source kind of a thing compatible on top of that, and say, hey, if anybody wants to use my stuff, it, it's you know, you take that as a compliment. It, it's like, like I remember the first time seeing somebody you know on Twitch or something. Uh, 
just trying to figure out how to use the thing I was, you know, sweating and I, I was nervous about, oh, and, <laughs> and they're doing it wrong. And, and then you start to learn and say, ah, okay, yeah, if I change the API slightly, then they won't, you know, uh, stumble and cross. So, yeah. so it, it's exciting. It's, it's fun in, 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 in the beginning. And it keeps being fun for quite a long time. But at some point, and that is sort of where we get to uh, where the, the schism between the, the you know, the, the, uh, the free and open source and just give it all away, um, you get to a point where it starts turning into just that extra job you have besides your primary job. Because mm -hmm. um, even though, you know, you do see some sometimes on Twitter people posting links of their, uh, you know, beautiful fires and say, Jarvis, yep. report me that, that's... That's like that's that's the you know that's a not a, not even one percent. That's very few of of people who who have some sort of name in open source uh, yep. that are able yep. to rag up enough you know sponsorship uh, deals with companies or whatever that are able to get to that. So most people actually have a full time job and a family um, to to you know to look after as well. Uh, plus now they also have this thing that they build that they have you know thousands of users using and. Uh, you know, uh, issues being raised, you know, people get complaints and, you know, uh, when, when do we have a fix for this issue? Because my boss, like, so that's the whole conversation. Have you, and there's many examples of that where people feel some kind of entitlement, um, you know, towards something they've gotten for free. Uh, yep. And and that is where, uh, like, it, it's a privilege to be able to have to build something, I'm not complaining about that, and and yep. I'm I'm he happily you know able to just scale back my efforts, and I've sort of you know uh, have have a, a co maintainer that all that is also helping out. Otherwise, I probably would have you know just you know thrown my hands in the air and walked away you know, like yep. two years ago. So yep. so uh, so I'm not sort of standing up here and you know saying look at me sad open source developer and 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 feel bad for me it, but it's more about just explaining the feeling that i've had and, yeah. and and do have sometimes is that there is a pressure and yes i could just you know tell everybody that you know i'm not going to maintain anymore if you want to fork it you know, go ahead and 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 you know take over the maintain like, yeah. like take it yeah. forward but yeah. you also feel responsibility like i feel yeah. responsibility over feel the bad community about it. for yeah. all the users yeah. and you you feel ownership like it is your baby like you, you're not gonna you know leave your baby at the side of the road and you know wait yeah. for somebody to come and pick it up you, you have really have to get at least in my experience you i i would imagine that i would really have to you know have a lot of issues like where i couldn't really uh, at all spend any time on it uh, so so it 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 turns into something where you say well i would love to spend all my time on this i would love to actually do this full time and be to have it as a job but yeah. then again then you and then you so so and but so, so that that is sort of where, and and I see where uh, Kazoo, I think, uh, Kazoo, might yeah. be. He 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 has like, I guess maybe a, a thousand times more downloads than I have, if if not more. Uh, and and he's one guy who's been doing this for twelve years, and I've been doing this for what what a four four five years. Four five years. So yeah. so so it's um I I can see where he's he's trying to see where is his options that that fits within what his interests are. So yep. yeah, you, you said Richard Stallman said, well, you can go and sell your services. You can go sell services or consulting uh, uh, or yep. you know, uh, but if you're just like like there's certain libraries like. MOQ, B unit, they um, like we are two guys that are able to maintain that with like with a you know a couple of hours of effort. And, and if we want to actually build a version two, we probably have to sing on more time. But you are able to it, like it's not big enough to have somebody working full time and then have somebody you know next to them you know doing consultant and making you know you know getting money into the business of so actually so that's able to drive that forward so yep. it's so i i can imagine that uh people not wanting necessarily open source developers not wanting to go out and do consultancy work and do stuff like that oh yeah to absolutely. earn money so because yep. then the, that would take away the time from um yeah from working on, on the project itself so so I, and i i you know i i know from people like um uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher that name as well. Madden, he's a guy who's building uh, Blazorize. And they, they they went to a dual license model. And yep. he says it's yep. been a good success for them. Yep. But that's also something 
like that's a quit your job switch decision and then go it full is, on on is. that and yep, and yep. and all of that and it's it's been a great success for them so that that's awesome but it's not necessarily in the cards for somebody who who's building something that isn't you know that big of an it's impact full time or, and it's or, not that or, impactful yeah, yeah exactly. that's right so so i think so, so let me uh, go ahead, the most. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to finish off my my rather long rant. I admit that. So for, I think for most open source developers, especially when they have a little bit of success like I've had, is you you you're not really to some extent you still have your full time job and then you have your side job, uh, and it does feel a bit like a job because it's not just fun and games anymore. It's not a greenfield project. It's like I mean, it's a brownfield with you know quite brown after many years, right? Yeah. So so at the end of the day. If, if, if you have a well-paying job, and most people that are in tech that have, you know, fairly smart, you know, they, they have a well-paying job. They, they don't necessarily need more money. They need more time. Yep. Or they need, they need the ability to, you know, leave what, they, what, what is paying, what is paying yeah. the bills right now to do yep. that other thing. Yep. And, and, and that is where I, so that is where open source, uh, and not in the classical sense where everything is free, but where open source could, could, could go, uh, you know, more like to an, and model where you know many if you have tens of thousands of users every if everyone paid one dollars a month you would still be doing okay right you would be able to quit your daytime job and do that right so, yeah but but that's the thing like <laughs> he, here's where look you are right i don't understand you know the 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 premise of it when do you remember what identity server did you know identity yes. server <laughs> so mm -hmm. They went open source. Everyone is using their 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 platform, and then at one point in time, they just went cold turkey, and they said you have to pay moving on from this moment onwards. I think it was two point yeah, something. Yeah, you know? ma they made a major version, like yeah. from four to five, and from five on, if yeah. you could stay on four as long as you wanted. Yeah, five yep. would be, and then they, I think the license model they have is actually quite. Um, uh, permissible like it's like if, if you are making one more than one million uh a year, a year or something, or something like that. Yeah. you can probably afford to pay them a little bit as well uh, yeah, and exactly. you know, get all the, the the good stuff they're doing yep absolutely but, but, yeah what i'm trying to say is again just going back to the original thought open source was not meant to be for profit by design it's not anti-profit but just understanding the people behind building mm. such a thing I think, Eagle, I think it would be of importance to help people understand what they're walking into when they start, you know, building an open source library. Like, I'm pretty sure almost 99% of the people that, you know, um, got into open source, mm. started building open source projects, one, they didn't expect one library to become that successful. I know a lot of people would tell me that would be, I had no idea, you know, Newton, uh, James Newton King, mm -hmm. the guy that the most popular downloaded uh, package mm -hmm. in the .NET world, right? Uh, for the people watching, he, he's a principal engineer at Microsoft, he's from New Zealand, and he he's one of the kindest people ever. Uh, if you ask him, you know, did you expect to have 2 billion anything? Mm -hmm. in general in life it'd be like other than time in terms of milliseconds i don't think so <laughs> right so 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 there is that scenario it, it when it succeeds like that by the way just so you understand newton soft is not free either just so you know if you if you exceed a certain level of serialization you'll see a little message that say that's a paid version you need a paid version just so you know i need to find mm. yeah not a lot of people yeah, know I that know. yeah yeah because because how often are you running Newton soft 20 million times to process data and serialize in real time? So it's actually doing that. Hmm. So um, what I'm trying to say is walking into OSS and then monetizing later in the game after people have already built on top of that is quite a hard problem to solve. And, and this is where I understand Kazoo's position. He's like, mm. I have 50 million downloads, 500 million downloads, mm. 100,000 a day, Eagle, 100,000 a day downloads, right? It's in yeah. every pipeline. It's in every system. Some of the most critical systems around the world are using Mock. You could see the graph. It's crazy, mm. right? I can imagine like putting myself in his shoes and looking at this number and then looking at my wallet, for instance, or looking at my family or something. And I basically mm. start thinking, how can I have that much success 
but mm. I can't, but I can't pay my mortgage. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. So what people are going to start thinking, I'm either a moron because I have this opportunity right there in front of me that only a handful of people around the world would have. You need to be a software engineer. You need to know open source and you need to put something useful out there. And then people mm. need to adapt it. So you hit all these moons, just five or six moons lined up, right? And at the end of the road, you're starting saying, how do I, how do I, how do I turn this into money, right? Mm. Let me ask you this question. I thought a lot, first of all, none of, none of my repositories need sponsorship. I don't need money from anyone, right? I'm fine, right? So mm. this is me kind of getting out of my own self and thinking, how can these people, you know, kind of, uh, if you're in the open source space and you are legitimized because it's, you're right, it's your own library and you mm. want to somehow find a way to monetize. My question for you would be, would it have been a better option to make a pull, re uh, sorry, an issue? And that issue has like a, it's, it's like these GoFundMe campaigns. So unless that issue reaches an amount of donation of $5,000, I'm not going to start working on it. Mm -hmm. you, see what I'm, you see where I'm going there? Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. so, so mm -hmm. in, in effect, you could say that uh, Kazoo kind of did that. But you, you, you could keep using version, what is it, something point, 18. The current version 18. before, yeah, 18. 18 or 19 mm -hmm. or something like that, right? And and you would be fine. There's no known bugs, apparently, as far as I know. I, I, I sorry, just for the record, I don't use Mark uh, myself. I use Institute because that's what we do at work. But supposedly it's it's working well enough that it has 100,000 downloads. It's great. So, I use so, it all the time. So, uh -huh. so uh -huh. So that is something that has, you know, taken 12 years of work and that's there now. And it would probably keep working with more or less minimal effort uh, in the in the foreseeable future. Yep. Maybe there's, um, you know, a, a an upgrade in, to that yeah, or for, whatever. For yeah. whatever eight or something. Yeah. So uh, I forgot. Wait, what, you, what did you ask me about? The, the, Sorry, the, the, question, the, the question was <laughs> that the, I'm, I'm discussing options for oh, yeah, yeah. monetization. So uh, on a pull request, imagine this eagle. Like yeah. imagine if your pull request has a link on it and it updates in real time. Yeah. And your pull request, you can you can do anything today. Like you could literally put anything you want in GitHub. So imagine that you have like a progress bar that says this feature hasn't reached the amount of like every time Microsoft upgrades .NET, and mm -hmm. people want to use that particular .NET version. For so the, I, for, I, for say, I, I understand uh, what you're saying. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you're basically saying you you want to like um, make it very visible to people that you know this is this library is maybe it's stale. I it doesn't get any development work before we get a certain target. So, in general, like my current employer pays for my time, and I can pay for my bills for that, and I have a contract with them. So I have a fairly predictable income that's stable, right? Good. The problem with sponsorships in general, unless you are one of the few that actually, you know, get so many that you can, you can lose half of the sponsors you have and still be able to pay your bills. But, but in general, like things where people are handing out goodwill, which essentially is what sponsorship is, there's no contract between uh, the sponsor and the sponsee. Yep. Know, the sponsor can pull out anytime they want. So, yep. Yep. so you, you, you will have a hard time you know, planning around, um, you know, budgeting with something of, of a sort. Uh, yep. So, so, and yes, you you could set up annoying roadblocks. I, I've like that, and I, I've seen open source developers say, well, uh, if you are, you know, in a certain level of they they create, you know, their own yeah, like the license sponsorships the, on, yeah, on, on, yeah. On, on on GitHub, and if you are a gold level sponsor, you will get your your issues will be taken care of, uh, you know, priority wise immediately or something. Yeah, 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 if, yeah. If, uh -huh. so. If uh, I don't know the situation for Kazoo and others, but but in yep. my case, uh, yeah, it, it more one is always nice. Like uh, I'm I'm by no means rich, so I can just you know quit my job and do whatever I want. I you know I need to make a paycheck every month, but yep. I yep. by by my biggest uh, what what I need the most of is more time and, and you know getting a certain amount of money through sponsorships on GitHub while nice and they can pay for a new computer or you know a holiday whatever. or whatever yeah. depending mm -hmm. on how lucky you are yeah. or maybe just a dinner out with the wife uh, they 
they are nice, but they don't buy more time, um, at least for me. So, so for my, for me, it, it I, like that's also why I don't really see a lot of benefit in, in, in you know, picking up those schemes because at the end of the day, if I then get whatever is in, you know, what I need to get to do that um, issue, I still have to spend the time on that, and the time is what is missing. Um, so that's that's the most important so, aspect of this. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, but yeah. but I, I I get other people's like if you are if you are you know a single guy or a girl with an open source library and you don't have family you don't have like your you your, have the time, your, your time so, your time yeah. permissions might uh, you know <laughs> yeah you might have a different perspective on things so it, it's 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 different for everybody. Uh, yeah, I, so, I I think I think that's what Kazoo was saying basically. He was saying mm. something like. I really hope we're saying his name right, but you know, I, I, but you know, I think that's what what he was saying is that his his actual name is Daniel, by the way. Just yeah, yeah. just, you just know. uses his real yeah. name is on, is is on Twitter, so I think it's it's yeah. fair game to yeah. just call him by yeah. his real name. Yeah, so I think. I think that's what he was saying. He was saying, you know, he was explaining there's a massive thread. I'm pretty sure you've seen it on mm. on his GitHub repo, an issue, an open issue with like mm. literally over 700 posts or something like that. I've never seen anything that big since the since the .NET fiasco. But you know, that's a story for another day. Um, do you remember the hot hot reload hot reload fiasco when that happened? Uh, well, no, I, I've I've seen big issues before, but yeah, that, that was something with the .NET Foundation <laughs> among others, right? So, if so people people get you know the keyboard warriors uh, <laughs> come out quickly when they need to. That's right. That's right. So um, he said, you know, I I now have responsibilities, and and I and I did say to him in in one of these threads, um, I said to him, uh, nobody owes you. You don't owe anyone anything. You really mm -hmm. don't. Uh, if you decide tomorrow that you're done with OSS for good, right? Mm. Uh, so be it. You know, nobody can come after you and say you are obligated uh, to me in any way, shape, or form or capacity. Mm. Okay. And I think the reasonable people in the community understood that. Like that's why they were saying, Hassan, you know, before you spin off your own fork and all that kind of stuff. Just talk to the guy, talk to him. Let's persuade him into doing one thing or another. The other problem that I've seen though, is that the bigger your library gets, the heavier the load becomes. Like, just like you mentioned, there's a honeymoon phase. You like to say that there's a honeymoon phase. You're happy, happy, your library is mm -hmm. great. You did all the things you wanted to do. Nobody can tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. And now you're in this maintenance and support mode. And mm -hmm. that's where it gets a little bit darker because mm -hmm. that's when you start realizing, oh no, now I have to work on this thing whether I like to or not. I have mm -hmm. to push through, otherwise I will feel guilty. I'm not contractually obligated with anyone, but I feel guilty and these people are going to abandon my library and then it's just going to be a, they call it abandonware, right? Abandonware yeah. is just, so, so let me just come back to this one. So Daniel, basically, if you find yourself, and this is a unique position, not a lot of engineers out there find themselves in a situation where they have 5 million downloads mm -hmm. on a library they're maintaining. Mm. Every single decision you make will have such a ripple effect, an impact, right? Uh, at a high scale, like, you know, mm. immediately, like imagine if, if James Newton King went out there one day and said, hey, by the way, Newton Soft from now onwards only does XML. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right you'll hear about it in cnn and fox news you'll hear about it in the news yeah, right yeah, yeah. every system out there will be in in panic mode i think open source i think getting into open source with the intent to make profit is a bad idea do you agree so i honestly haven't talked to anybody who's done something built something in open source that got into it just to make money because then they would have, you know, created a license from the get go. That, yep. um, you know, dual license. It could be very proprietary. Yeah, yeah. Shut so, it down. Yeah. so I, I don't think that's how it starts. Yeah. But I do think you have libraries. You saw that with Lock4J as well. You have libraries that Newton Soft, like uh, Mark, like Lock4J. Like, there's a whole bunch of libraries uh, out there in the Internet ecosystem um, that are in some ways systemic. To a certain level, you you saw as well uh, your colleagues from Microsoft, uh, yep. Rick, Rick Rick Lander, uh -huh. sort of a, had a measured approach to the whole thing. He posted in the .NET uh, that was an issue on the .NET I think uh, open source uh, um, repository, uh -huh. and said, "Well, we are sort of in a wait and see position. We still use Mark 
one point eighteen or something, yep, and we yep. don't upgrade. We don't we don't have any security issues right now. Obviously, we can't have the current you know something not that, yet you know, not yet no no, yeah, no yeah, yeah yeah sure but but he, they 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 he, he said he was quite clear that that the current like if if something is pulling you know emails out of out of people's github repository configurations that wouldn't be something that could sort of continue to work with with microsoft but they uh for the for the sort of dot net open source uh, from microsoft on github that, that was the decision to to wait and see and see where this lands uh, and and because it is it is also, what you've alluded to is that yeah, if you have many millions, or hundreds of lines, hundred thousands of lines of code that actually leverages mock, it's not just um, you know you can't just pull it out and, yeah. and replace it with something else. It's yep. it's a significant investment. So yeah, so so you as the user has yep. invested time, and, yep. and so if I put my you know open source uh, maintainer hat on, and I want to recognize that people who have spent time using my stuff. If they've invested a lot of time in that. You know, people have written books, made video tutorials, all of that based on you know what I have yep. done. So, yep. so that is that sense of responsibility and and I and I understand the pain, and you want to be respectful of that. Uh, so, and and so I don't think it's about getting into open source to make money, but at some point you try to look for options because you feel responsibility, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like and and it's about. At some point, you feel like, well, I don't have the time, but I feel a responsibility, responsibility to all my users, to all the people who've somehow invested that time in my library in some way or another. And uh, I can, I could abandon it and just, you know, I'll be hit by a bus and not, you know, show up anymore uh, mm -hmm. on GitHub. Uh, and, uh, but it's, I, at least for me, and I imagine quite a few others that have had some, some success in some way or another, they've like, yeah, we could just walk away and, you know, Say hey, up for grabs. Who anyone yep. who wants to keep you know yep. to take this further, yep. uh, but you um, yeah that, that you feel the feel a responsibility uh, towards the people that have invested time, and and you're generally happy to have users uh, yep. and and happy users at that as well. So it, it's it's uh, it's not it, so so when people start looking for options like you saw with the dentist server, we've seen with. Uh, image uh the image magic i can't remember the yeah name I, of the, saw, I, I remember yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah they also switched to sort of a semi uh, you know a paid non-paid paid, uh, yeah, yeah. dual yeah. license thing because so they have they feel they feel a lot of responsibility they want to continue doing the work but they also need to put put bread on the table and they like at some point you get to a stage in life where some something has to give and that is typically i guess what you see when people have done something in open source and at a certain point they they say well we want i want to see if i can do something so i can actually commit even more time to this and give my users even more you know love and attention and and my time but you know as you say that is it is the time that that we want to sell not the open source itself because yeah. the open source is out there it's the time yeah. that uh, that we want to not sell but you know at least be compensated for when you get to a certain level, uh, if that is possible. And yep. uh, so if I can sort of take a, like a table, because I think, I, because I know you've also sponsored things. So, so we sort of recognize that, that there is, um, you know, uh, there is help in that. And that's help in having, giving people some, it helps with motivation. It, it helps keep you going. Yeah, it that's, helps that's make those mm -hmm. long nights, uh, you know, mm -hmm. um, be, be a little bit more, more yep. fun. Uh, but, um, I think um, so. I've been thinking a lot about some models. I have some tweets around that as well. And um, but I think so. I, I've myself talked to to my uh, my my bosses at work. Uh, we are a fairly small consultancy house from Denmark. Uh, Two hundred fifty people. We are about. So it's a, like a, in, in in America that would be a, like that's a that's a small shop, right? <laughs> but uh, mom and depending, shop, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's a small. So so um, but but one of the things. I, I was trying to, to rack my brain and say, so we are consultancy house, so, uh, and we use a lot of we use open source when we go and build solutions for our customers, right? So, so, but but how do I convince you know my boss and my customers that we should you know be giving back uh, because they're getting something for free? Their motivation is yep. if you just look at the raw numbers, there's no really motivation for doing yep. that. Like it, yep. it's um, it's out there for free, and and and. A lot of them also know open source through 
the open source that Google, Microsoft, and Amazon builds, and they kind of feel like they're already paying for that because you know they're, because they're using, using their, the yeah, cloud whatever yeah. services they have, Windows licenses, yeah, and all that. Yeah. So they feel like, yeah, this is just you know my um, my my free stuff I get with all the other stuff I pay for, right? So so that is sort of a um, discrepancy. And and one of the things I so I, I talked to my my uh, some of the guys there and said, well, it's also something that we can use. Um, you know, as a branding thing, like saying so. In the so, I, I think that that might be a position you could take if we can, if we can get 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 it to be to come to a certain point in the in the community where it is something where like people they have you know CSR policies, they have equal rights, but there's all sorts of different social issues that where when you go as a um, you know um, a developer you want to you know maybe move to a different company you look uh -huh. at some of the things you don't want to work for certain companies because they have you know um uh, behavior you don't deem good i guess yeah uh so so one of the things i think could be an uh, an edge that some companies and something that maybe could be uh, uh, something that we could look into uh and promoting a bit more is that people uh in companies if if they want actually something in return well you get good publicity, like good publicity by sponsoring open source by giving back, yeah. and 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 you you can uh, so so that's one thing, and that's something that actually um, was that made sense to the marketing department of all places in my company, and said, yeah, we we can we'll definitely do that, and it makes sense. It's like you know sponsoring um, uh, all, all sorts of other good um, good humanitarian efforts, but this is something that also means that it's a good it's it's it's. I hate the word virtue signaling because it's really not about it. It's about doing a good thing, but also you get something back. You 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 get to show the world that we actually understand the problems the around us and we want to give yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. And I, I talked to one of uh, another guy there, our CIO, uh, no CIO uh, chief. He's CTO. like the in tech tech lead kind of a thing. Yeah, CTO. CTO. He's, he's, yeah, 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 CTO. Yeah, and he also think he, he's been thinking about well, can we add you know a small byline on on the invoice we send to customers with, like maybe uh, there's an extra from one percent or uh, zero point one percent of the bill, that is just uh, you know reserved for open source. So so that we and you know, make it clear to them that it's something that we are sending forward. So 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 we we will be doing stuff like that. Uh, well. We will see if we can, but we will definitely just start a most open source initiative in our company because it, it made sense uh, to our marketing department um, actually to go ahead and, and use some money on that and, and use that as, as, a, yeah. as a way to get the company to make it clear that there is a clean, uh, there's a clear uh, value proposition in also giving back. It's not just because we are good people, but it's yeah, something yeah. that you can also use. In we a benefited way. from something yeah. and therefore we're being grateful. Yeah. Exactly. And another thing, so the problem is, so, so getting to that decision, we actually managed to get to that decision, uh, I mean, I think we even maybe a year ago, but then, you know, setting up all of the, getting sponsorships up and going and, and doing all of that, it, there's no, it's not like, there's not no, there's no easy, like, you know, entering your credit card details and we, you will get an invoice. You could drop that from your tax kind of a thing for companies. And we will automatically make sure that the open source projects that are relevant to to sponsor will get a piece of the pie whatever you have uh, you want to mm -hmm. give every month for example there's no easy way it's it's uh it's it's uh, there's a lot of extra work on top of that where you actually have to do a whole bunch of um like like the company would have to do a bunch of extra stuff it's not just it's like from the decision to say, yeah, we want to do that to actually being able to do that. That's a, that is where I think there is a possibility for somebody. Uh, and I, I have been, you know, hoping Microsoft would step up at, at some point because they own basically the whole ecosystem, at least in .NET, like everything from GitHub to DevOps to um, Azure, NPM, to Visual Nuket, Studio, Asia, everything. Visual Studio. The whole, they have the whole pipeline. Yeah, so they, yeah. they are in a unique position. But even without Microsoft, there's a possibility. So a simple scenario I've been thinking about is if I am a corporation on GitHub, let's use that as an example, but it could also mm. be Azure DevOps. I can go in and maybe configure in one of the you know many places I can configure stuff and say my open source budget for this month is I, I don't know hundred hundred dollars, which is something many reasonable sized companies could yeah. afford. Yeah. And then there would be something that looks in that is hooked in at like a GitHub bot that that monitors whenever you do a you know CI pipeline build deploy 
you know, move things to production. Yep. They would just inspect what other packages you're using. And it could be packages that have to pay, like it would be the full package for you, not just the top level packages yep. that you actually yep. have typed out in your you know, CSPROJ files, but it would also yep. be the packages dependencies and so on. So you get the full picture. And then obviously that would be packages that doesn't make sense to sponsor because they are from Microsoft and that's already people getting paid full time to, to work on that. But you could then have, you know, that could even be like everybody gets an equal share of the hundred dollars every month on that pool. Uh, and it would be something that would be a one click solution, more or less for the company, right? You would just hook it into your pipelines and every month, and maybe you can go and say, I want to give them a little bit extra because whatever, you know, uh, or you, so, and, and you couldn't even, you know, add extra, that could be some algorithmic prioritization of certain projects uh, yep. or whatever yep. you would want. But the basic promise is it a premise I have is it should be sort of a, like, um, like Amazon's, you know, one click to buy thing. Yep. That should be a, if, if it's so easy, then there's very little excuse not to do it. But if you have to do a whole lot of manual steps, uh, then then it becomes a, a bigger hurdle. And then even companies like my company, which I'm happy to say do want to sponsor, but it's just something that takes so, so much time it to takes get through. A, it and, takes some time, yeah. 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 So, 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 so I... I yeah, it, just hope got, that it makes sense. Yeah. No, no, I, I see where you're going. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think fundamentally at the core of open source, it's the idea of having a product. Let me call the code base and whatever is out there is a product. Having mm -hmm. a product be available to download freely. Mm -hmm. And then later on, you know, saying, how can we profit off of it? You should sponsor, you should do that. You know, um, this is where the problem really is, Eagle. Like you, ha you still have to go to the CFO of your company, and and explain why a thing that you're getting for free, we still have to pay money for. Like for for the business, for mm -hmm. like to, to you, you and I as engineers, mm -hmm. we totally get it, yeah. right? Because we're the boots on the ground. That's what we say. Mm -hmm. Boots on the ground. Yeah. I see the developers. I see how much time and effort put into it. Fantastic. For a CFO in a company. If you tell them, hey, we, we're, we, we're getting this for free and we have no legal obligation whatsoever to commit to anything financially, but I want you to pay a hundred bucks every month, mm -hmm. even $1 every month, right? Mm -hmm. CFOs are the stingiest people on the planet. They will give you $1 if and only if they see at least within 10 year time frame that this $1 will turn into a million. If they don't see it, they don't approve it. It's their job, literally. Their job is to not be generous, <laughs> right? Sure. Except when it makes sense for the business. Like when a lot of people say this, oh my God, the company is great. It's giving me swag. It's giving me free stuff. Ah, is it really free or is it building a ground, playing the long game here? Like everybody is pushing their code to GitHub for free. You can use GitHub today. You can have hundreds mm. of repos. Right, people yeah. are starting to abuse GitHub in ways you wouldn't imagine. They upload files as storage mm. in GitHub, so they started GitHub started to kind of you know restrict that. But the bottom line is, again, you're coming down to the basics. Mm. I'm telling you, this cup you can come and take it for free, and as an honorary system, you know, not even an honorary system. If you're a nice guy. You will you will pay me money for it, but if you don't, it's okay. There is mm. no obligation unless this fundamental problem is solved. Because you see, the thing is, Eagle, we're playing on the fact that people are willing to appreciate something they've been using for years. Not everybody, not everyone is Eagle Hansen. Not everyone is Hassan. Not everyone is you know anybody out there that likes to sponsor and appreciate the work of art. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this, Eagle. The people that pay the money in these big corporations, let's say this work of art behind you. Let's say Picasso made that. Let's just out of out of curiosity. Let's say Picasso. That's my that. wife. Oh, this one. That's my wife. But uh, yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah. She, she's better than Picasso. It's it's amazing, right? <laughs> let's just say someone who's not an artist mm. is gonna look at it and be like, what? What? Five dollars? Right. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. if it was the Mona Lisa, right? CFOs don't understand that the people that write the checks, the investors, they don't understand why do I need to pay for something that is free? Not just free, it's free and I can take it internally and have my own artifactory and spin it mm. up. This is going sure. back to 
open source by design is non-profit by design. And so, that's the that's the thing that we're trying to bend backwards. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, no, so I I I do think like many other things that companies spend money on uh because of the way it looks to the outside world. Yep. Like, supporting open source, giving back could yes. be one of those things. That was my uh what I tried to say it's the beginning. So that would be something like you say, you know, yep. uh, uh, the, the, the company sponsoring the local football club just to get their yep. na name brand out there yep. associated with good, doing good stuff, right? Yep. That is something I think that could start out in the tech industry because that is general, uh, you know, that is where that is an uh, immediate impact. Like all the developers from other companies will see, hey, this company over here is actually, you know, doing doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. So that might be something in that that would be worth an insignificant investment for most companies. But it's, it's like a... So, but then the second thing is, and that is where you could get into a scenario where you could say that, hey, I am a developer who has a library identity server or something like with mm -hmm. a, a mm -hmm. fairly big impact. And we are maybe four or five guys that actually want to work on this full time, but that requires that we have a budget that looks around this time. Uh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 might, that might that might be, be a need to actually, you know, set some sort of, you know, sponsoring goal or something. And then if you are a company that has critical infrastructure, you know, products that really, really depend. And it's usually some of the folks that you see that that lose their, well, I kind of say lose their shit, you know, on, on the GitHub threads, when something changes that basically threatens their livelihood. Yeah. Like like when... when uh, if you change your API they, or something. Yeah, oh. they change the API or, you know, uh, identity server changes their license model. That was also a lot of, you know, crying oh, and, 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 and screaming. Yeah. And, and same with image magic and same yeah. with... Uh, and, you know, to some extent... So, so it's, I guess, a slightly different scenario here with MOQ. But still... A lot of people have a lot of investment in that, and yet they they have so much investment that they will, you know. So at some point, uh, you know, it should be a fairly easy thing to go to your manager and say, "Hey, we have, you know, this guy who's uh, a few guys who are, who are really doing a lot of work here, but we have no guarantee that they will stick around." So that would be could be a second tier on top of like the. You know, just giving a little bit out to everything I use, kind of a level where you say, well, okay, so if if people want to actually go and do the open source thing and really not do open not not do open source, but do you know um, sponsored source yeah. or uh, not open source as in source is free to look at, but not necessarily you like it's, it's, it, the open or... source terminology is also I think it, it's the good ideas from the 80s and 90s around that that's might yep. not have, I don't think necessarily that is the mental model that that is really um, unless you talk to the old hippies as you, you mentioned before that is not necessarily the mental model that really exists and is relevant in today's world anyway yep. so so I, I definitely think there's there's different levels of depending on like the the amount of time and um, requirements in terms of monetary support that is for different types of projects, but it is something that that can you know uh, can be solved. And I think the first step is to make it super easy for for corporations, especially corporations. I don't really want you know individual developers you know paying. Uh, um, me, uh, well, at least uh, yeah, I can talk for myself, like but like, like, it, it should be corporate, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, or, or businesses rather. That, that uh, And if we can make it super easy for businesses to do the right thing, like put in your credit card here, and, and GitHub probably already had that credit card information because you yep. have a GitHub enterprise account. So yep. it's just like, you know, but make make it super easy to you know just fill in that checkbox or say yes automatically you know take a little bit of out of my credit card every month and and divide it onto the things i use that's a good first step and that would have that would lead to companies having make it much easier for them to get started and then there might be some somebody who who you know makes it like a populist thing to do and that might you know start a time wave uh, and then you get into the so your analogy with you know YouTubers or, or uh, streamers or whatever yeah, it is that yeah, are able to creators, sit yeah. content creators that are able to put things up and then get a little bit they get small yep. you know, buckets of money from from all sorts of advertisers all the that are, yeah, yeah, yeah advertisers and our sponsors or not, you know other they have yep. a lot of small re revenue streams that make it viable for them to do that full time then it might be that 
the you know, not the YouTuber with 10,000 views on their videos, but all of a sudden you might grow up into something that is more systemic, like the big, you know, Newtonsoft kind of a packages. Mm -hmm. Well, then they could actually, you know, get the options to be the Mr. Beast and, and actually just do that for a living and, and yeah. do that comfortably. And and then that would be the other ones like like me and and you who have a little bit of impact in the open source community. We get a little bit of extra. We we might even at some point reach a level where like we can be a one man shop company and 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 you know pay the bills, um, but it needs to be super easy like it is with YouTube for people to to just, actually give back. Just give or, back, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and or it is with um, yeah. So 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 I think that is I think the starting point where we can aim for and make it easy for people to do the right thing because I think most people will actually want to do that. But if it's too many steps to get there. Uh, and too many steps to keep maintaining doing that right thing, then it's it's going to be at most a one-time thing, maybe once in a while. So I that is I my like, thinking on that. That's right. And I like the idea of, like, you know, the content creators can make money. If you're using my library, whatever else you're doing, I should be able, like, if you create a YouTube video and you have, like, 100 million views, right, of course your revenue is going to go up because of all the advertisement that's happening on mm -hmm. on your view. I don't see that any different from using your library and you have all these customers that are using your system because of the success of this library and what it's doing for you. Mm. you but there's no model to support that. That's the problem. There's a disconnect, right? Let me ask you this, Eagle, and and, and I know we're, we're closer on time here. Uh, I want to be respectful. I know it's late over there, but I personally don't think you can potentially, with the status quo, with the way the world is today, I think the maintainability of a project, an open source project, mandates having a community around it. I, I feel like a lot of engineers find themselves kind of one man army in front of the whole world using their library. And I think a big important part about being open source and putting a library out there is to build a community around these libraries that are willing to learn and contribute to this particular part. And I, I see, I mean, you know, you, you just told me you have another guy that's working with you and whatnot, mm -hmm. but for the longest period of time, you're just a lone wolf. You're just building on your own, which can bring a certain amount of stress. And I also know that it also requires a whole lot of different level of communication to be able to have people work on your baby, on your, on your product, the way you want them to right that's another problem mm. right so do, do you agree and actually actually, mm. actually the biggest problem might be so mm. i've had multiple contributors uh, sending mm. in prs over you know the lifetime yeah um, but like you you're your team lead right at microsoft and you have people new people coming and joining your team yeah yep good developers, but they are inexperienced in your code bases they're inexperienced maybe in the way you want to write code yep. so that is a lot of initial investment from your, your, your you as a team lead uh, to teach them how to do things there's a lot yep. of investment from your colleagues leveling them up before they are really productive and that is in terms of contributions sometimes i would it, it's i've heard that from many other open source maintainers as well sometimes it's it, it costs more to have a PR come in. Oh yeah, you have to do the whole review process you going have to back review. and forward. Oh, yeah. say, you have to do yeah, and you want to like you say you want to align things with how it works. And there's all sorts of edge cases that people who are not deeply familiar with. If you're doing something that is fairly worthwhile, that's typically also quite technical. So there's lots of small details that you have to go back and forth with people on. And that the first time contributors they cost a lot of time, and most. Most of them, they don't come back. So it's it's yep. uh, it's like I I could have built this myself uh, uh, twice or three times in the time I took to sort of go through review and go through uh, it. And then so so I was super happy with Stephen who who stuck around and kept coming back. And I, I as soon as I ha had a chance, I asked him, Hey, do you want to actually have commit rights <laughs> and, and and sort of try to give him some responsibility? Yeah, and, yep. and 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 he he's been doing a great job. But but most people don't do that. Uh, and 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 most people come by for one or two maybe, and then maybe they are done with the project they did at work where they needed that, so they move on to something else. And I'm guilty as that as well with multiple other open source libraries <laughs> I contributed to because that's mm -hmm. just the reality. Like you, you don't have you have you know you have other things as well you need to deal with. So I'm I'm not criticizing people who do that. It's uh, and it's generally nice to have PRs come in, but that is it is um, it's not an easy 
challenge. And I think people will recognize that if they try to onboard somebody and you on their team, on their, you know, in their company, on their project, it's, it's, it's the same thing. But uh, if you have 10 pull requests every day, you have that 10 times and it's a new guy every time. So, so Eagle, I want from you, um, any final remarks about the future of OSS? What have you learned so far? Let's say someone is about like, as you and I are talking right now, someone is about to spin up their own repo. The next 2 billion download repo is about to spin up and that person just happens to see this podcast. What do you want to say to them? I guess, what do you want to say to yourself when you first started on the open source projects? <laughs> so honestly, uh, I I wouldn't have changed. I, like, I, I wouldn't go back now and do a license. Uh, and I, I don't... I'm in a you know privileged position so that I I don't need to I you know I I, yep. I don't so yep. so I I don't have that problem so to myself I say just do yep. what do what you did maybe yep. you know uh, be even more out in the open and 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 uh, you know be promoted even more and, and talk about it even more and get uh, and try to get you know more input more contributors uh, in uh, and see if you can engage more with the users. Um, but then again, it's it, it's about you know being in the right place at the right time, uh, as it is with any open source. I think, at least in yeah. my case, it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so so it's uh, it's. But but I, I think it's 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 if if you have the time, it's a privilege. It's fun. It's a good learning experience. You get to be your own boss. You get to make all the mistakes, and you can only blame yourself. So that so so I have very little negative to say about the experience. Good. Good. But I I understand as well that at some point, if you manage to to hit some success, you will also have those times that will come where you kind of a bit tired of of doing the work. Yeah. Uh, but you you feel the responsibility. You feel people coming and and asking for help, and and it's you know it's a pat on the shoulder and that keeps you going uh, but it, it, it's not roses you know all the way to the end of the so world it's not always no. buys or rainbows out there there's no. there's a little bit of work <laughs> so so yeah. so th so three things about open source give me three words that summarize your experience with open source just three words uh wow well you're catch catching me <laughs> in the I'm, I'm trying i'm trying to capture i i i, I, I am not a free word kind of a guy if you I, know, I know you i know i know you're, uh, you're uh, very thoughtful you. and kind uh, well i i just tend to ramble on until i've said enough words to sort of make some sort of coherent <laughs> sentence uh well i think um for me free words would be um really like like uh, fun uh, challenging and um Hmm. Commitment, perhaps. Commitment. I, yeah. I hope that the third someday to be rewarding. Rewarding is, you know, and this is this is the topic of this podcast, really. Sure. Can it be I know that it is I actually know, want to replace fun with rewarding because it is rewarding in many different ways along that's the right. way. That's right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Rewarding, challenging, and really commitment. Like if you're not in mm -hmm. You know, you're not in fully in it. You know, you might actually. You see, that's the thing. You you get to feel guilty. You know, if some some company, some group, like I have people from North North America, sorry South America, uh, messaging me, and they're saying, "Hey, we're using this RISTful since we're using these. Some of these libraries mm -hmm. are using. Can you do this one thing? Can you modify this one thing?" And of course, you feel happy because people need your stuff. It's valuable. It's nice validation. But also mm -hmm. at the same time, you do understand that. It comes in with quite a tax. Eagle, it's always funny to fun and funny <laughs> to hang out with you. Yes. Um, uh, you know, hopefully the the mock storm goes away. You know, at some point in time. So is every other storm that happened in the open source community. Uh, I like that there's a lot of emotions involved, and I like mm. the the heat of it. You know, I'm, these days I'm reading a book called The Rage Machine, which is how social media is structured to make you angry. Because when mm. you become angry, you put content out there and then people become angry because of your content. And then they put content out there. And this is this infinite loop. Yeah. Endless I mean, I'm loop. sure Mr. Musk hasn't been, you know, he's, he's he, he, there's a blip on his, you know, .NET uh, sphere over on his dashboard saying, just, hey, that's activity what's, there today. What's right? happening over yeah, there? <laughs> get some .NET sponsors in so we can sell some stuff, right? Yeah, um, no, it, it, it is, it is, uh, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 uh, 
you know, it, it's a it's a good thing um, to to have these conversations. So yeah, I appreciate you um, you having me on. I hope that the audience uh, was able to you know make sense of my ramblings and oh, at yeah, least no, get no, no, a absolutely. slightly coherent message out of it. No, no, no. Look, so, your experience with OSS is 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 invaluable. Like the stuff that you're just saying right now, and for the people watching, just to understand, mm. you know, listen very well to what Eagle is trying to say because this is coming from a personal experience. It's not a book that he read or a podcast that he listened to this is actually what happened when a person built something and it succeeded the unit is an amazing thing again it's really good um eagle come back again to our podcast mm -hmm. please and uh you know hopefully we'll talk about something less dramatic you know maybe maybe a new feature a new capability a new design pattern or something similar and uh you know i wish Definitely. you all the best thank you so very much for joining us likewise thank you take care eagle bye take care. bye